In a dry and arid land, under the scorching sun of Gilead, there emerged a man destined to become one of the greatest prophets in the history of mankind to this day. His name was Elijah, the Tishbite, who needed no written chronicles for his fame to spread. His story spoke louder than the achievements of many kings in the ninth century before Christ. Elijah shone like a beacon of truth, challenging kings and reviving faith in a kingdom plunged into shadows. Elijah's relevance in the divine plan was unquestionable, foretold in Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This prophecy echoed in the hearts of all, waiting for the return of this messenger of God. His emergence, shrouded in mystery, only reinforced his enigmatic figure. Although the Bible states his origin from Gilead, little is known about his family or his roots, which only increased curiosity about this prophet. If this type of content about the teachings of the Bible interests you, I ask for your support with your subscription and don't forget to activate the bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Elijah was not just a man of words. His physical endurance was remarkable. The Bible recounts in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1 his challenging words to Ahab, announcing a great drought by his word. His act of running ahead of Ahab's chariot from Mount Carmel to there evidences his vigorous physical condition. His journey was marked by powerful acts and divine interventions. After confronting Ahab, God led him to the brook Cherith, where he was miraculously sustained by ravens. With the brook dried up, the divine command led him to Zarephath in Sidon, where a widow welcomed him, as prophesied in Luke chapter 4, verse 26. There, Elijah demonstrated God's power, miraculously providing continuous food. In Luke chapter 17, verses 8 to 10, we find a parable that reflects the humility and duty of the servant, echoing Elijah's journey, who, despite being a great prophet, always remained a faithful servant to God. Elijah's story takes us on a path filled with faith and miracles, from the valleys of Gilead to the ends of Samaria and Galilee, bringing eternal lessons of obedience and trust in the Lord. In a certain village, as Elijah continued his journey, a memorable encounter occurred. Ten leprous men, excluded and desperate, cried out for mercy to Jesus, pleading for healing. Jesus, seeing them, instructed them to present themselves before the priests, an act of faith that resulted in their purification. Among the healed, a Samaritan, recognizing the miracle, returned glorifying God and thanking Jesus demonstrating the universality of divine grace. Upon arriving at Zarephath, Elijah found a widow facing scarcity. Her last resources of flour and oil were nearly depleted. Elijah, however, brought a message of hope. He first asked for a loaf of bread and promised that the supplies would last until the return of the rains. This promise tested the widow's faith, confronting her and trust in God. The widow's son, however, fell gravely ill. At the peak of despair, the woman confronted Elijah, reflecting human pain in the face of suffering. Elijah, moved by compassion and trust in God's power, interceded for the boy, taking him to his room. Elijah cried out to God, stretching himself over the boy in an act of intense supplication. The miracle occurred, life returned to the boy. The mother, witnessing God's power through Elijah, recognized in him a true man of God, whose words reflected divine truth. This act reaffirmed Elijah's mission and demonstrated God's mercy, even in the most painful circumstances. The widow's faith was restored, and the miracle served as a testimony of God's presence and power. On Mount Carmel, Elijah would face another challenge. The land was ravaged by drought, and God instructed Elijah to present himself before Ahab, promising to send rain upon the land. This moment set the stage for one of the most dramatic confrontations between true faith and idolatry. Ahab, at the same time, faced a great famine in Samaria. Obadiah, a devout follower of the Lord, played a crucial role, protecting the prophets of God from Jezebel's massacre. Elijah, aware of the risks, bravely set out to fulfill the divine command. Elijah's narrative takes us down a path filled with faith and challenges. 
Each episode, from the miraculous provision at the widow's house to the imminent confrontation on Mount Carmel, reveals a pattern of dependence and trust in God, marking Elijah as one of the great prophets of Israel, whose life was a testimony to God's power and faithfulness. As the land suffered under the severe drought, Ahab and Obadiah, in a desperate attempt to save what was left of their flocks, divided the lands in search of pasture. Ahab went in one direction while Obadiah went in another, each hoping to find some remaining grass. In the course of their search, Obadiah unexpectedly encountered Elijah. Recognizing the prophet, Obadiah showed reverence, but also expressed his fear. He knew of Ahab's efforts to find Elijah and feared the consequences of announcing the prophet's presence. Obadiah, a man of faith since his youth, revealed to Elijah how he had protected the Lord's prophets, risking his life before Jezebel's wrath. His loyalty to God was unbreakable, but the fear of reprisals from Ahab was palpable. Elijah, however, assured Obadiah that he would present himself before Ahab. This promise represented more than a meeting. It was a confrontation of faith, a prelude to a greater challenge to come on Mount Carmel. Obeying Elijah, Obadiah went to meet Ahab and announced the prophet's presence. Ahab, upon meeting Elijah, confronted him, accusing him of being the cause of Israel's troubles. Elijah firmly refuted this, pointing out that the true cause of the country's woes was idolatry and disobedience to God. Elijah then proposed a decisive challenge on Mount Carmel to gather all of Israel, including the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah. It was a call for the people to decide whom they would truly serve, the Lord or Baal. On Mount Carmel, before a crowd divided in their faith, Elijah confronted the people with a clear choice, to follow the Lord or to follow Baal. His message was direct, challenging the people to make a definitive decision. The test would be simple yet powerful. Two bulls would be prepared, one for the prophets of Baal and another for Elijah but only the true God would answer with fire from heaven. The people, realizing the seriousness of the challenge, agreed to the test. Elijah instructed the prophets of Baal to choose and prepare their bull, calling on their gods to light the fire. This moment was crucial, not just a test of divine power, but a confrontation between true faith and the idolatrous practices that had corrupted Israel. The prophets of Baal, in desperation, called on their God from dawn until noon, but their prayers remained unanswered. Amid the silence, they resorted to extreme rituals, marking their bodies with cuts in hopes of a divine manifestation. Elijah, observing the futility of their efforts, taunted them, suggesting Baal might be busy or distant. The desperation of the prophets of Baal grew, but neither their loud voices nor their self-flagellation rituals evoked any response. Then Elijah called the people to come closer. In front of everyone, he rebuilt the Lord's altar that was broken and forgotten, using 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Elijah reaffirmed the unity and spiritual heritage of the people. He carefully prepared his sacrifice, placing the wood and the cut bull, and then ordered that water be poured over the altar, not once, but three times, completely saturating the sacrifice and the wood, making the challenge even more impressive. At the moment of sacrifice, Elijah prayed to the Lord. His prayer was not just for a supernatural response, but also for the people's hearts to turn back to God. Then the fire of the Lord descended, consuming the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and even the water in the trench. Before this miracle, the people in reverence recognized the sovereignty of the Lord, exclaiming in unison, The Lord, He is God. Elijah, in an act of divine justice, ordered that the prophets of Baal be taken to the Kishon Brook, where they were executed. This act symbolized the eradication of idolatry and the restoration of Israel's commitment to the Lord. After the victory on Mount Carmel, Elijah announced the arrival of rain as he departed. Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, humbly prostrated himself in prayer, waiting for the sign of the promised rain. After seven attempts by his servant to spot any sign in the sky, finally, a small cloud appeared. 
This small sign foretold the awaited change, the rain that would break the long drought. Soon, the sky filled with clouds and a heavy rain fell upon the earth, a tangible sign of God's mercy and power. However, Elijah's victory on Carmel had consequences. Jezebel, furious at the defeat of her prophets, threatened Elijah, forcing him to flee to save his life. Discouraged and fearing, Elijah embarked on a solitary flight towards Beersheba in Judah, leaving behind his servant. Elijah, exhausted and desperate, took refuge in the desert. There alone, he expressed his wish to die, feeling unable to continue. At this moment of vulnerability, Elijah revealed his humanity, sharing the same feelings of hopelessness and limitation that all of us at some point face. In the desert, Elijah, exhausted and without hope, found refuge under the shade of a broom tree. In his moment of greatest vulnerability, an angel of the Lord visited him, bringing sustenance and comfort. The bread baked on coals and the jar of water were not just physical provisions, but also a sign of God's ongoing presence and care. The angel, on his second visit, encouraged Elijah to eat for the journey ahead. With the strength of this heavenly food, Elijah traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, a place of divine encounters and revelations. Jezebel, enraged by the defeat of the prophets of Baal, swore vengeance against Elijah. Meanwhile, the prophet, bearing the weight of the mission and persecution, found refuge in a cave on Mount Horeb. This refuge became a setting for a profound spiritual experience and self-discovery. In the cave, God asked Elijah about his presence there. Elijah expressed his zeal for the Lord, but also his feeling of isolation and despair. This honesty before God reflected the depth of his faith and the severity of the situation in Israel. God then made his presence known not through grand phenomena like strong wind, earthquake or fire, but through a soft and gentle voice. This gentle yet powerful action was a reminder that God is found not only in spectacular acts, but also in quiet and subtle moments. Elijah, hearing this soft voice, covered his face with his cloak in reverence and came out of the cave. God's voice questioned him again, and Elijah repeated his statement of zeal. In response, God gave him new instructions, marking a new chapter in his prophetic journey. God directed Elijah to return to the desert of Damascus and to anoint Hazael as king of Syria, Jehu as king of Israel, and Elisha as his prophetic successor. This act symbolized not just the continuity of Elijah's mission, but also the ongoing divine plan for Israel. God also revealed to Elijah that there were 7,000 faithful remnants in Israel who had not bowed to Baal. This revelation was a source of comfort and hope for Elijah, reminding him that he was not alone in his struggle for fidelity to God. On Mount Sinai, Elijah was transformed by the revelation of God. He received not just specific instructions, but also the assurance that God's mission would continue beyond his life. With this new perspective, Elijah set out to fulfill the divine orders. Elijah's first task was to find Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing the field. By casting his cloak over Elisha, Elijah signaled the transfer of the prophetic calling. Elisha, recognizing the gravity of this moment, left his labors to follow Elijah, marking the beginning of a new prophetic era in Israel. After being called by Elijah, Elisha showed deep respect for his roots and origins, asking permission to bid farewell to his parents, a gesture symbolizing both gratitude and the transition to his new life as a prophet. Elijah, understanding the depth of this moment, allowed Elisha to follow his heart. Elisha, in a symbolic gesture of farewell, slaughtered the oxen he had been plowing with and shared the meat with the people, marking the end of his former life and the beginning of his journey as God's servant. The transition from Elijah to Elisha was more than a mere meeting. It was a moment of transformation. Elisha, by accepting Elijah's cloak, committed to a path of dedication and service to the Lord, a decision that would shape the rest of his life. 
Meanwhile, Elisha traveled to Damascus, where Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was gravely ill. The king, eager to know the outcome of his illness, sent Hazael with gifts to Elisha, seeking a word from the Lord. This encounter between Elisha and Hazael was filled with deep meanings and future consequences for Syria and Israel. Elisha, upon meeting Hazael, delivered an ambiguous message. Hazael would recover from his illness, but would nonetheless die. This enigma revealed not only the future of the king, but also the complexity of God's designs and the role Hazael would play in them. The prophet, seeing the future through Hazael, wept, foreseeing the suffering Hazael would inflict upon the people of Israel, a vision that deeply moved him. Hazael, confused by Elisha's reaction, did not fully understand the impact of his future actions. Hearing Elisha's prophecy about his rise to the throne, he questioned his own capacity to commit such atrocities. But Elisha's response was clear. It was what God had revealed. Thus, Hazael returned to Ben-Hadad, whose death soon followed, fulfilling the prophetic word. The story of Naboth and his vineyard follows. Ahab desired Naboth's vineyard to turn it into a garden. He offered an exchange or payment. Naboth, faithful to the inheritance of his fathers and to God's law, rejected the king's offer, a decision that would tragically mark his fate. Ahab, frustrated and angered by Naboth's refusal, returned to his palace dissatisfied. His reaction to this refusal revealed not only his character, but also the corruption permeating one of the darkest episodes in the history of Israel. Jezebel questioned Ahab's authority as king, arguing that he should have the power to take what he wished. With cunning and a disposition for evil, Jezebel devised a strategy to acquire the vineyard, disregarding justice or morality. She acted sinisterly writing letters in Ahab's name and sealing them with the royal seal. She sent these letters to the leaders of Naboth's city, instructing a fast and setting up a false trial against Naboth, accusing him of blasphemy, a crime punishable by death. Jezebel's plan was meticulously executed. Naboth was honored and then publicly humiliated. The city's leaders, following the queen's orders, positioned false witnesses to accuse him of blaspheming against God and the king, a cruel plot that led to his death by stoning. Jezebel's scheme succeeded and Naboth was unjustly condemned and killed. His fate was the result of corrupt manipulation and the unrestrained greed of royal power. Naboth's death represented a grave injustice and a low point in the history of Israel under Ahab's reign. After Naboth's execution, Jezebel quickly informed Ahab that the vineyard was now available for him. With Naboth dead, Ahab did not hesitate to claim the vineyard, an act that symbolized his total submission to evil and the corrupt influence of Jezebel. The moment Ahab entered Naboth's vineyard, taking possession of it, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. God instructed Elijah to confront Ahab, accusing him of murder and usurpation. This encounter between Elijah and Ahab would be a moment of great tension and spiritual confrontation. Elijah obeyed God's command and confronted Ahab in the vineyard, delivering to him the harsh message from God. Due to his acts, there would be severe consequences, not only for him, but for his entire house. Elijah announced that the same fate that met Naboth would meet Ahab. Ahab, upon encountering Elijah, called him an enemy, but Elijah responded with the truth of his actions. He prophesied that Ahab's house would face total destruction and that Jezebel would have a tragic end. These prophecies were a reflection of divine justice in response to corruption and evil. The story of Naboth, Ahab, and Jezebel is a powerful reminder of the consequences of sin, greed, and injustice. It highlights the importance of integrity and fidelity to God, even in the face of the greatest provocations and challenges. The condemnation pronounced by Elijah on Ahab was severe and symbolic. The dogs would eat those belonging to Ahab who died in the city, while the birds of the sky would devour those who died in the field. 
This was a divine sanction for Ahab, who, influenced by Jezebel, had abominably strayed, following idols and practicing the iniquities of the Amorites, whom God had expelled from Israel. Hearing Elijah's words, Ahab demonstrated an unusual change of attitude. He tore his clothes and dressed in sackcloth, a symbol of mourning and repentance. This change in behavior showed that, even in the darkest moments, there was room for repentance. So it happened, confirming the power of God through Elijah. Despite this manifestation of repentance by Ahab, the story does not end there. The dynamics of power and divine intervention continue to unfold, especially regarding the royal succession and the continuation of the prophetic legacy. Ahab's era ended, and his son Ahaziah took the throne. Injured, he sought guidance from Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, ignoring the god of Israel. Elijah was instructed by an angel to confront the king's messengers, questioning their decision to seek counsel from pagan gods. Elijah conveyed God's message to the messengers. Ahaziah would not recover from his illness, but would die. This prediction was a direct judgment on the king's lack of faith and his search for guidance outside of the Lord. When the messengers returned to Ahaziah with Elijah's message, the king asked about the identity of the man who had spoken to them. Hearing the description, Ahaziah recognized that it was Elijah, the Tishbite, Ahaziah, in an attempt to confront Elijah, sent a captain with fifty men, but Elijah, firm in his position as God's prophet, pronounced a divine judgment. If he was truly a man of God, fire would descend from heaven and consume the captain and his men. And so it happened, confirming again God's power and the authority of his prophets, even in the face of opposition from kings. In response to King Ahaziah's insistence, a third captain with 50 men was sent to arrest Elijah. However, unlike the previous ones, this captain, aware of the divine power Elijah possessed, approached with humility and respect, knelt before the prophet, pleading for the life of him and his men. Recognizing God's power manifested through Elijah, the angel of the Lord instructed Elijah to go down with him without fear. This moment demonstrated that humility and recognition of God's power can change the course of events, even in situations of confrontation and tension. The story of Ahab's covetousness for Naboth's vineyard and Jezebel's manipulation to acquire it portrays a scenario of injustice and corruption. Ahab's encounter with Elijah in the vineyard is a powerful reminder that divine justice prevails over human machinations. God's response to Ahab's repentance was a postponement of the evil that was predicted to fall upon his house. This situation underlines God's mercy and his willingness to respond to genuine repentance. The story of Elijah and Ahaziah reminds us of a profound truth. A disciple is not above his master, nor a servant above his Lord. Ahaziah's actions, seeking counsel in false gods, echo the mistakes of his father, Ahab, demonstrating a pattern of disobedience and rebellion that repeated throughout his reign. The confrontation between Elijah and Ahaziah's messengers highlights the authority and power of the true prophets of God. Elijah, facing the forces of the king, remained steadfast in his mission to proclaim the word of the Lord, challenging threats and earthly power. In the final title of Elijah's earthly journey, he and Elisha traveled together from Gilgal. Knowing he would be taken to heaven, Elijah instructed Elisha to stay in Gilgal. However, Elisha, dedicated and loyal, refused to leave his master. Knowing that Elijah would be taken by God, his devotion led him to accompany Elijah at each step of his final journey. In Bethel, the sons of the prophets, aware of Elijah's imminent departure, approached Elisha, asking him about his decision to follow Elijah. Elisha, aware of what was about to happen, asked them to be silent, demonstrating his respect and serenity before the sacred moment that was approaching. The journey continued towards Jericho, where again, the sons of the prophets approached Elisha with the same inquiry. Elisha, with the same firmness, reiterated his intention to stay by Elijah's side until the end. Upon reaching the Jordan, Elijah performed a miracle. 
He struck the waters with his mantle and the river parted, allowing them both to cross on dry ground. This act was a powerful symbol of God's power acting through Elijah. On the opposite bank of the Jordan, Elijah asked Elisha what he desired before he was taken to heaven. Elisha, seeking to continue his master's legacy, asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, a request that reflected his aspiration to be a faithful servant of God as Elijah had been. Elijah's departure marked the end of an era and the beginning of Elisha's ministry. When Elijah was taken to heaven in a whirlwind inside a chariot of fire pulled by horses of fire, Elisha watched the scene, exclaiming in admiration and sorrow. After Elijah's ascension, Elisha tore his own clothes in two, an act symbolizing the end of his apprenticeship and the beginning of his own ministry as the leading prophet of Israel. The crossing of the Jordan, Elijah's ascension, and Elisha's request for a double portion of Elijah's spirit are events loaded with symbolism and meaning, representing the continuity of God's work through his prophets and the transition of the prophetic mantle from one generation to the next. After Elijah's ascension, Elisha returned alone, carrying his master's mantle. By crossing the Jordan, Elisha demonstrated that Elijah's spirit rested upon him, a sign that Elijah's prophetic mission would continue through Elisha. In Jericho, the sons of the prophets recognized Elisha's spiritual authority, approached him with respect and reverence, confirming that Elijah's spirit was with Elisha. This transition marked the beginning of Elisha's ministry as the leading prophet of Israel. Despite Elisha being recognized as Elijah's successor, there was a request from the sons of the prophets to search for Elijah. Elisha, knowing his master's fate, initially doubted but finally yielded to their insistence. The search, however, turned out to be fruitless, confirming Elijah's ascension to heaven. Elijah's prophecy about the house of Ahab found its fulfillment in Jehu's reign, who used Elijah's prophetic word as justification to completely eradicate Ahab's house, fulfilling the divine judgment on the family. Jehu, in his campaign to purify Israel from the influence of Ahab's house, eliminated all associates and relatives of Ahab in Jezreel. His zeal to fulfill God's word was relentless, marking a period of great change and purification in Israel. On the way to Samaria, Jehu encountered the brothers of Ahaziah, king of Judah. After ordering their capture, he executed them without hesitation, continuing his mission to destroy all linked to Ahab's house. Jehu also met with Jonadab, the son of Rechab, with whom he formed an alliance. Jonadab, known for his devotion to the Lord, was invited by Jehu to witness his zeal for the purity of Israel, an act symbolizing renewal and commitment to true worship of God. Jehu continued his purification in Samaria, eliminating all remnants of Ahab's house. His commitment to fulfilling God's word, as spoken by Elijah, was a pivotal moment in the history of Israel, representing a return to obedience and fear of the Lord. The story of Elijah and Elisha, as well as Jehu's actions, show how God works through his prophets and chosen instruments to fulfill his purposes and judgments, also highlighting the importance of fidelity to God and the consequences of apostasy and idolatry. The lives and ministry of Elijah and Elisha remain as a testimony to divine intervention and God's steadfast faithfulness to his people, reminding us of the importance of living a life of obedience, trust, and dedicated service to God. Through the narratives of Elijah and Elisha, we are offered a deep insight into the dynamic relationship between God and his prophets, a relationship marked by mutual trust, commitment, and divine intervention at the most critical moments. These stories not only speak of miracles and challenges overcome, but also of the profound humanity of these men of God, who experienced both divine power and human vulnerability. Elisha, in taking up Elijah's mantle, not only inherited a position of prophetic authority, but also assumed the responsibility of continuing the divine mission in Israel. His ministry was characterized by miracles that mirrored those of Elijah, but also by a compassionate focus on the common people's needs, from purifying the waters of Jericho to multiplying the widow's oil. 
Elisha demonstrated that God's power was not limited to acts of judgment, but also manifested in acts of mercy and provision. The transition from Elijah's ministry to Elisha also illustrates an important principle in God's work, succession and mentorship. Just as Elijah prepared Elisha, the latter also invested in the next generation, symbolized by the school of prophets. This chain of transmission of knowledge and spiritual wisdom underscores the importance of preparing leaders who can carry forward God's mission, ensuring that his word and his deeds continue to impact the world. Furthermore, the story of Elijah and Elisha teaches us about God's sovereignty over all spheres of life. In a time when political power and corruption threatened to lead Israel astray, God intervened powerfully to reaffirm his authority and his promises through his prophets. God not only challenged kings and power structures, but also miraculously provided for the needs of his people, reminding us that no aspect of our existence escapes his care and provision. The lives of these prophets encourage us to remain faithful in our walk with God, even in the face of adversity and discouragement. Elijah and Elisha faced moments of deep despondency and loneliness, but also experienced God's comforting and strengthening presence. Their stories remind us that, even in the darkest valleys of our experience, we are not alone. God is with us, ready to renew our strength and guide us forward. The lives of Elijah and Elisha are a powerful testimony to God's faithfulness to his servants and his people. They remind us that, despite life's challenges and uncertainties, we can trust that God is working in and through us to fulfill his divine purposes. They invite us to live lives of obedience, service and deep faith, knowing that our labor in the Lord is not in vain and that in the end we will witness his glory and power manifested in our world. Thus, the stories of Elijah and Elisha do not just offer us tales of faith and miracles in ancient times, but also provide timeless principles applicable to our spiritual life today. Each narrative, each miracle, and each trial faced by these prophets serve as a mirror in which we can reflect on our own faith journeys, learning and growing through their experiences. One of the most resonant messages from their lives is the power of prayer and dependence on God. Both Elijah and Elisha lived in constant communion with God, seeking His will and His direction at every step. This intimate relationship with the Creator allowed them to act boldly and confidently, even in the most challenging situations. They remind us that beyond our own abilities, it is in God's strength that we find true effectiveness and purpose for our lives. Moreover, the story of these prophets highlights the importance of moral and spiritual courage at a time when true faith was constantly challenged by idolatry and injustice. Elijah and Elisha stood firm in their commitment to God, challenging the earthly and spiritual powers of their time. Their example inspires us to stand up for what is right, to uphold the truth, and to live our lives in righteousness that honors God, even when we face opposition or misunderstanding. The legacy of Elijah and Elisha also underlines the importance of mentorship and discipleship in faith. The transmission of wisdom, knowledge and experience is vital for the growth and strength of the believer's community. Just as Elijah prepared Elisha to continue God's work, we are called to invest in those around us, sharing our life and our faith, so that the body of Christ may be built up and strengthened from generation to generation. The lives of these prophets teach us about the sovereignty and providence of God through every trial and every victory. In their lives, we see God's hand moving powerfully to fulfill His divine purposes. They remind us that God is in control, working all things for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Elijah and Elisha were not just instruments of God in their time, but their stories continue to speak to us today, encouraging us to live a life of deep faith, courage, commitment and total dependence on God. They invite us to look beyond our current circumstances to God's sovereignty and find in Him our hope, our strength, and our greatest purpose. 
May their lives be a beacon of light for us, guiding us to a deeper and more meaningful relationship with the eternal God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Reflecting on the lives of Elijah and Elisha, we encounter a call to introspection and spiritual growth. Their stories don't just recount extraordinary events and miracles, but also show us the hearts of men who, despite their own weaknesses and struggles, fervently sought to follow God's will. This pursuit of holiness and obedience, even amidst adversity, challenges us to examine the quality of our own faith and commitment to God. Perseverance in prayer is another spiritual treasure we can draw from their lives. Elijah, in particular, demonstrates the impact of persistent and fervent prayer. His prayer for rain was not a fleeting act, but a deep commitment to intercession, hoping against all hope in God's promise. This reminds us that effective prayer is not so much about the quantity of words, but about the depth of our faith and the sincerity of our heart. Humility is another valuable lesson that stands out in their stories. Despite the powerful miracles God performed through them, Elijah and Elisha did not seek glory for themselves, but always pointed to God's sovereignty and majesty. In an era where self-promotion is common, their example urges us to live lives marked by humility and constant acknowledgement that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights. God's faithfulness is perhaps the most comforting lesson in the lives of these two prophets. Through every challenge, every need and every moment of despair, God proved to be faithful. This faithfulness manifested not only in provision and protection but also in guidance and loving correction. As we face our own trials and difficulties, the stories of Elijah and Elisha assure us that we can trust in God's faithfulness, who never leaves us nor forsakes us. The lives of Elijah and Elisha transcend centuries and continue to speak powerfully to our hearts today. They invite us to live with bold faith, persistent prayer, genuine humility, and unwavering trust in God's faithfulness. May their stories inspire and transform our lives, leading us to a deeper and more committed relationship with God. May we, like them, leave a legacy of faith and obedience that impacts not just our generation, but also those to come, for the glory of God and the advancement of His kingdom on earth. In this journey of reflection on the lives of Elijah and Elisha, we reach a turning point where the legacy of these prophets becomes a mirror for our own spiritual journey. The story doesn't just tell us what was, but illuminates what we can be when we place our trust and faith in God. Through their lives, we are invited to cultivate a more intimate and powerful relationship with our Creator, reminding us that true greatness lies in obedience and fidelity to His call. Elijah and Elisha's commitment to God's truth, even amidst a culture drifting away from His ways, challenges us to be light-bearers in our own generation. In a world marked by uncertainty and moral relativism, the example of these men of God calls us to stand firm in our convictions, holding the torch of divine truth and being examples of justice and holiness. Their courage and determination also inspire us to face the challenges of our time with faith and hope. Just as Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal and Elisha extended grace and healing to those in need, we are called to be agents of change, using the gifts and resources God has placed in our hands to bless and transform our surroundings. If this content has been valuable to you, I ask for your support with your subscription so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Together, we can enlighten more minds and expand our understanding. Thank you for being here and may God bless you.